which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and fades not away reserved in heaven for you. And also an inheritance, now I wrote down a kingdom. We've inherited number one a kingdom and it says Christ is our king. Come on. You know folks, the world has a lot of trouble if we had all, if we all had Jesus as our king, Sister Martha, then it'd be a better place. <laughs> and, and But folks, I know, you know, and, and our president, I guess, doing the best that he can, and we need to pray for him. And we need to pray for our world leaders. But, but we're a part of a kingdom, and Christ is our king. And also there's coming a time when he's going to step out on the crowds of glory, and he's going to call his people home. And then there's coming a time when he's coming riding back on a horse. And also it says the, the multitude in heaven. And folks, you and I, we might have never rode a horse in the natural, and it seemed like I've fallen off about every horse that I've ever rode and I took and said if I had a horse with a seat belt and I'd that's my horse amen that way I won't fall off but Christ is coming back one day after people that are ready he's also he's our spiritual leader and can you imagine a little thought my father knows best you know sometimes you and I will argue with God we'll wrestle with God but I want you to know if we'll just let him win and folks when we have an encounter with God it, it'll change our life and we might not leave, you know, to Jacob, and he left with a limp because he'd been in the presence of an almighty God, and he'd learned to surrender. And, folks, but there's a time how that you and I need to surrender unto God and say, Lord, I'll be willing, I'm willing and obedient, and I'll follow you wherever you want me to go. He's our leader, but also he's our father, and he knows what's best for you and I. If we just trust him with the little things in our life, then he'll be mighty in us. Woo! Hallelujah. Also, he's a living stone. Boy, I'm glad I'm coming to somebody that's alive. And then, can you imagine? He said, I'm he that liveth and was dead, and yet I'm alive forevermore, and I have the keys to death and of hell. You know, we took him and visited a little fellow the other day and worked for him, and I seen on the wall, and it had a big old ship, and it had a, a seagull on it, and it had also a lighthouse. And I said, boy, I like that picture. And I was telling about my, my little picture on the wall, and it's got a boat, and I'll just look all kind of dreary. I but there's an eagle soaring by. And I said, you know, said my son, I'll draw me an eagle in that picture. And I'm telling you, it said, those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm talking about an inheritance of God. If we'll learn how to wait on God, then we can reign with him. If we suffer, then he'll raise us up to a high and lofty place, and we can soar out with the eagles of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Boy, I'm glad I'm saved. You know, people pay good money to feel this good. <laughs> and it's free. The little thought of a family of brotherhood. A family and a brotherhood. You know, folks, when we, we get saved and we, we're not by ourselves anymore, but we have brothers and sisters that love us. I remember I was praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I look around, and I see brothers and sisters, and my pastor, he's way up in years. I was here sitting there waiting patiently for me to get the baptism. And on a Thursday night, I was standing around the altar at Lily Church, and the Holy Ghost, I could hear me speaking in an unknown language, and I knew that I had the Holy Ghost. And the devil said, you didn't get no Holy Ghost. I said, yes, I did. Let, just hear me speak in tongues. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you it's still real today. But we've come to a brotherhood. We've come to people that love God and people that want to live right and do their best. And also it's people that are failures sometimes. I don't know if you failed, failed God or not. But from time to time, I was talking to my son-in-law the other day. And I said, I took my wife Dover down below the house where we'd raised around these cliffs and around caves and around the river. And, and I stood over at the edge of a big old 40 or 50 foot drop off. And my wife walked right up to the edge. <laughs> and it scared me. And he said, well, you mean you stand way back and look? And I said, I stumble sometimes. <laughs> so, you know, and I, folks, uh, to me, and it might be level ground, but my, my big, my shoe, sometimes the toe will hang, and I'll just go falling right on the ground. 
So, you know, and sure enough, that day, somewhere along the day, I stumbled. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus will lift you up. You may stumble, but don't waller in the mar. Don't waller in the pig pens of life. How about climb out of that? To David knew what a pit was. But he said he lifted me up out of the mire clay, out of a horrible pit. He established my goings in him. He put my foot on a solid rock. Hallelujah. Woo. Every person in this family belongs to God. You know, we look around and, and every one of them, Jonathan, belongs to God. Every one of them has a secret place in the Most High. They have a shelter and they have a, a place where they can go and receive strength. I know, folks, it's good. I to have brothers and sisters in Christ I that can pray with us and intercede with us. I but there's nothing like getting along with God into the woods somewhere or into a bedroom somewhere or into a closet somewhere and just seeking almighty God and finding the presence of God for yourself. Hallelujah, boy, we've been heard it a, a lot. It says everyone receives favor from God. I'm talking about in this kingdom.